about that Disney life. I am Danny B, the girl who is all about that Disney life. The next movie that we will be talking about is Lady and the Tramp, which came out in 1955. So without further ado, let's get to know the cast who helped make this movie possible. We have Barbara Luddy, who was Lady, Larry Roberts as Tramp, Bill Thompson as Jacques, Bill Bocom as Trusty, Verna Felton as Aunt Sarah, George Javot as Tony, Lee Miller as Jim Deere and the dog catcher, Peggy Lee was Darling, Cy and Am, and Peg, Stan Freeberg was the Beaver, Alan Reed was Boris, Thurl Ravenscroft was Al the Alligator, Dallas McKinnon was Tuffy, Mel Blanc provided the vocal effects for the rat, and finally the Mellow Men which was Thurl Ravenscroft, Bill Lee, Max Smith, Bob Hamlin, and Bob Stevens. They were the vocals for the dog chorus in the dog pack. Now without further ado, we get on to the facts all about the lady and the tramp. Number one, a real life inspiration. In 1937, story artist Joe Grant came up with the idea based on his own dog lady and how she got pushed aside when Joe's wife had a new baby. Joe Grant showed his ideas and drawings to Disney and Walt Disney liked his drawings so much that he said to Joe, you got the lead on this project, now let's see what you can come up with. And this movie was initially supposed to be called Lady. During the late 1930s and early 1940s, Grant and other artists were working on the story. However, Disney was not happy with any of the story ideas that they had come up with. And Disney thought that the character Lady was too sweet and too innocent and there was not enough action to this movie whatsoever. Number two, another inspiration for the story. Disney read a short story written by Ward Green called Happy Dan the Cynical Dog in the Cosmopolitan magazine that was published in 1945. Disney thought Grant's story could improve if Lady fell in love with the dog exactly like the character in this short story and Disney bought the rights for this story. Number three, original movie ideas. Tramp had different names in the beginning as choices. He was either going to be called Homer, Rags, or Bozo. Lady was only supposed to have one next door neighbor named Hubert. Another idea, Aunt Sarah was supposed to be a mother-in-law. The cats, Cy and Am, were going to be called Nip and Tuck. And Lady's owners were going to have different names. They were going to be called Jim Brown and Elizabeth. Number four, movie secrets. In the scene where Darling unwraps her Christmas present, that's Lady, it was inspired by an incident when Disney gave his wife a child puppy as a present in a hat box to make up for Disney forgetting a dinner date that he had with her. In 1949, Joe Grant had left Disney Studios and then around 1953, a story did start to take shape based on Grant's drawings and on Green's short story. Green then wrote a storybook version of the movie that came out two years before Lady and the Tramp at Disney's insistence so that the audience would be familiar with the story. Because Green wrote a book about Lady and the Tramp, Joe Grant didn't receive any credit for any of the original story drawings or original idea to begin with in the movie whatsoever. Another secret, Peggy Lee was not only a singer, and she voiced the four characters in the movie that I had mentioned earlier. She also helped co-write six songs for this movie. Number five, the release. Lady and the Tramp was released into theaters on June 22nd, 1955. And it was an episode of Disneyland TV called A Story of Dogs, which aired before the movie's release. Lady and the Tramp was then re-released in 1962, 1972, 1980, and 1986. And Lady and the Tramp played a limited time in select Cinemark theaters from February 16th to February 18th in 2013. Number six, the box office. Lady and the Tramp earned around $6.5 million in distributor rentals. When the movie was re-released in 1962, it made between $6 million and $7 million. When the movie was re-released in 1971, the film made about $10 million. When the movie was re-released in 1980, it made about $27 million. And when it was re-released in 1986, it made about $31.1 million. Lady and the Tramp made a domestic lifetime amount of $93.6 million. And this movie made a lifetime international amount of $187 million. Number seven, awards and nominations. 
At the 1956 BAFTA Awards, Lady and the Tramp was nominated for Best Animated Film, but it lost to Blinkety Blank. At the David D. Donatello Awards, Disney won an award for Best Foreign Producer. In 2006, it was nominated for Best Youth DVD at the Satellite Awards, but it lost to The Little Mermaid. Number eight, restaurants inspired by the movie. There are a couple of restaurants, but they're only at a few Disney parks. There is Tony's Town Square Restaurant that is at Main Street USA, at Magic Kingdom, at Disney World. And I can tell you without a doubt that this is the actually best restaurant I have ever eaten at at my times at Disney. I at least go to this restaurant twice when I'm at Disney World. It is really good Italian food. And a side note and a little bit of a secret that my Disney travel consultant told me at Magical Dream Journeys, you can actually get autographs from Lady and the Tramp. You just ask your server for the autographs, they take your autograph book, they come back, there are the paw prints from Lady and the Tramp, which is insane. Another restaurant inspired by the movie, it's a pizzeria that's called the Bella Note, based on the song from the movie, and it's only at Disneyland Paris. Number nine, representation at parks. So we will start with Disneyland. During the So Close sequence in World of Color, Lady and the Tramp make cameos having dinner. Next park, Disney World. At Disney's Pop Century Resort, there is a statue of Lady and the Tramp in the 1950s section. And Fantasmic Lady can be seen in the bubble montage. At Tony's Town Square Restaurant, Lady can be found in the decor. Both Lady and the Tramp briefly appear in Once Upon a Time during Mrs. Potts' narration. Tramp is also in the bubble montage at Fantasmic. Tramp and other characters from the movie are in the decor at Tony's Town Square restaurant as well. In the spring at the Flower and Garden Festival at Epcot, there are topiaries of Lady and Tramp. There is a statue of Cy and Am that appear as villains in the Vogue store on Sunset Boulevard at Hollywood Studios. Cy and Am appear in Fantasmic in the bubble montage as part of the Lady and the Tramp segment. The cats are also f among the villains featured in Wonderful World of Animation during the shiny segment. Tony and Joe have made occasional appearances as face characters at Tony's Town Square restaurant and also Tony and Joe are a part of the bubble montage in Fantasmic. Next park, Tokyo Disneyland. Uh, there have been past appearances and representation of Sai and Am, the cats. Unfortunately, there are no recent updates with the cats and there are no other representation of Lady and the Tramp at that park. Next park, Hong Kong Disneyland. There have been past appearances of Sai and Am, the cats in that park, but there have not been any recent updates about where the cats can be found. Also, there are no other representation of Lady and the Tramp at that park as well. And there you have it, all the facts about Lady and the Tramp. If you like this video, please hit that like button and leave a comment down below. And don't forget to subscribe. And I hope you have a zippity doo da day. Goodbye.